Hello and welcome back. You have learned how to write fantastic code, manage versions and collaborate like a pro. But there is a crucial piece of the puzzle that often gets overlooked. Communication. How do you explain your project to new contributors? How do you provide clear instructions for setup and usage? And how do you ensure your project looks, looks professional on GitHub? The answer is Magma. Specifically, how you use it to craft excellent readme files and other documentation. Today, we are diving into the essential markdown syntax you need and critically why good documentation isn't just a nice to have, but an absolute necessary for any successful project. Let's get documenting. So what is markdown and why readme.md file? So at its heart, Markdown is a lightweight markup language that allows you to add formatting elements to plain text documents. It uses a very simple and easy to read syntax. It has designed, it was designed to be easily convertible to HTML and many other formats. Now, why is it so popular, especially with Git and GitHub? Mainly because of its simplicity. It's incredibly easy to learn and write. Then the readability. Even in its raw form, Markdown is very readable. Then versatility. You can create headings, lists, links, code blocks, images and more. And then finally, readme.md standard. So on GitHub or any other Git platforms, any file named readme.md in the root of your project is automatically rendered as a formatted HTML on the repository's main page. This makes it the go-to place for your project's introduction. Now, a well-crafted readme file is often the first thing anyone sees when they visit your repository. It's your project's storefront, it's welcome mat, and it's quick start guide all rolled into one. Now, before we dive into the syntax, let's briefly reinforce why bothering with good documentation is so vital. It's not just about looking pretty. It's about efficiency, collaboration, and sustainability. So the first thing we have is onboarding new teammates. So imagine a new engineer join in your team. A clear readme with setup instructions can save hours of their time and your time explaining those things. Then your future self. So believe me, two months from now, you will forget why you made a certain decision or how to run that obscure script. Good notes save you from future headaches. Then open source contributions. If you want people to use or contribute to your open source project, clear documentation is non-negotiable. It lowers the barrier to entry. And then project clarity. It forces you to think through how your project works, its features and its purpose. This clarity benefits everyone involved. And then Professionalism. A project with well-maintained documentation signals attention to detail and a high standard of work. It's a hallmark of professional developers. So think of documentation as an investment. It pays dividends in saved time, fewer questions and smoother collaboration. Now let's jump into a text editor and explore the essential markdown syntax. Uh, you can use anything you want. You can use a VS code, sublime text or directly on GitHub's file editor, which often has a preview mode. So in our case, we will be using this collaboration project and for us to save some time, I've already created this file. So this is the naming convention, readme.md. So that's a markdown file. And this is where you will be uh, providing your instructions. So like I said, just to save some time, I've already included uh, everything here and we'll, we'll just go through all of these. So the first we have is your headings. So headings structure your document. So think of them like h1, h2, etc. in HTML. So if I open up this file in the edit mode, so I can use this pencil icon. So here this is how it is generally written. So a single hash uh, can be used to provide your project title. So this would be this is an equivalent of h1. Then double hash is your section heading, which is equivalent of H2. Then three hash is a subsection, which is equivalent of H3. This is your smaller heading, which has four hash. 
which is equivalent of your h4 so likewise this will be h5 and this will be your h6 so same as your html uh, what we do in html we use hash depending on uh, how you want your headings to look like then you have your emphasis so whether you want it to be italic bold or strike through so you can either use this single asterisk start with single asterisk or and end with or um, underscore so start with underscore and end with underscore and then the text in between this marks it as italic if you want to make it bold you can use double asterisk or double underscore if you want to make it both bold and italic you can use three asterisk beginning and ending with it now if you want to make any text strike through then you can use this tilde symbol so you can begin with two tilde symbol and then end it with two tilde symbol and this will be marked as strike through now you can also create lists so for clear structured points so first we have is your unordered list so you can either use a hyphen or you can use an asterisk so here you can see hyphen item one hyphen item two you can also create sub items and you can also make use of your asterisk and this will be your ordered list where you can see the numeric order so one two and then sub items as well and then three four and then so on now you can also have code blocks so crucial for showing showing uh, code snippets and commands so the first we have is your inline code so here like let's say uh, you want to show this as an inline code then i can make use of this um, um, single tick starting and ending with it so this will be shown as an inline code now if you want to pass a multi-line code block you can use this um, three uh, back ticks starting with three back ticks and then ending it with three back ticks so here this is a simple python code that i have written now you can also put links so if you want to direct your users to external resources or other parts of your documents you can provide links so you'll have you can you can have the text and the url for that particular text so here is our example so visit our github repositories which is the text and this will be linked to the url you can also have images um, within your uh, readme file so for you know like your screenshots or diagrams or logos so uh, this is how you will be providing it now you can link uh, to images hosted elsewhere or which images that you have within your repository itself for that you will be using a relative path then you have your block quotes so if you want quoting text often used for warnings or important notes then you can use this block quotes and uh, the last one I have is your horizontal rule. So this can be used to visually separate sections. So here, this is how we can provide it. Now, these are some of the most common and essential markdown elements you will use daily. There are more, but mastering these will make your readme files look professional and be incredibly helpful. So let me comment this and show you the uh, changes. So let me comment and done. So you can see how uh, it is showing you different different sizes. So based on the hash, the number of hashes you have used. So this is italic, this is bold, this is bold and italic, and this is your strike through. This is your unordered list. This is your ordered list. And here is your inline code. This becomes your multi-line code. Uh, this becomes your link so the text which is mapped to your link and here will be your image and this is your block code so if you want to mark something as important you can use that and then you have this horizontal rule so if you want to mark a section you can uh, set that as well so readme files are very essential for any project uh, to provide documentation information or instructions about how to use that uh, project and many other useful information now beyond just knowing the syntax there are few tips for crafting really effective readme files so have a clear title and overview so immediately tell users what your project is about then the table of content so use links to jump to sections GitHub automatically generates these if, you're, if you structure your headings well. 
then installation instruction so clear step-by-step -step commands then you can have usage examples so show how to run your code or use your library then contributing guidelines so you know how can others help how can others contribute to your repository so maybe you can link it to a contributing.md file then you can have your license information so which is very crucial for any open source project so you know what is the license you are using who can use who cannot use all that information and then finally the contact or support so how users can get help how can they reach to you or where they can reach out for support all that information so a good readme file anticipates questions and provides immediate answers setting your project up for success you have just gained a super power that goes beyond just writing code effective communication through markdown Understanding and applying a markdown syntax for your readme files and other documentation is a hallmark of a professional developer. It helps onboard teammates, guide users, attract contributors and ultimately make your project more successful and sustainable. Whether you are working on a personal portfolio project or contributing, contributing to a large enterprise system, clear documentation is very critical. This wraps up module 4. You have learned the essentials of GitHub collaboration from pull requests to issues, forking and now markdown. You are fully equipped to participate in any modern development team. In the next video, we will have our fourth project which is team collaboration simulation. If this video helped you conquer markdown, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel um, and let me know in the comments your favorite markdown trick. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.